Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be going over the accept statement in try accept or clause or however you want to refer to it. Um, and I'm going to talk about three things. Uh, one is catching a variable uh, or one is catching multiple different types of exceptions. The other is catching a variable uh, sequence of exceptions. And the last is the differences between accept and is instance, because there's some subtle ones. I'm not sure if it's a bug in Python. Uh, it kind of feels like a bug, but I don't know. I think it's such a weird edge case that it shouldn't really come up in reality, but that'll be the more advanced part of this video. Anyway, uh, let's let's jump into it. So I am going to make a function which always raises an exception. And so I'm going to use the no return type. I did a video on no return. And I will try and remember to link that in the description. But we got no return. And for sake of discussion, we're just going to raise assertion error. Um, hello, hello. Just to get something happening here. And we're going to write a try accept statement. So the way try accept works is you start with a try statement, then you have a block. This block of code uh, will be some amount of code that may raise an exception. Um, I like to keep this one line long just because uh, it minimizes the scope in which you have to think about how this could raise stuff. Also, if you make your accept clauses overly broad, uh, you might catch code that you don't intend to. Uh, the next is a series of accept statements, and the accept statement, uh, the most simple one is just blank accept, which catches all exceptions. I would recommend not doing this, and I did a video on that as well, and I will link that in the description. Um, and then the accept looks like, you know, some type, so let's say assertion error, and then an optional binding here, so you can assign the caught exception to a variable here. And uh, inside this block, we can, you know, print, you know, caught on error. And let's just say ebang r so that we can see what error we caught. And this is just the very most basic form of catching an exception. So you can see here, we call this function, it raises assertion error, and then we capture it and say that we caught an error. Now we can actually catch multiple types of exceptions here. And, um, Let's say that we wanted to catch both uh, assertion error and type error. Ooh, my highlighting <laughs> tick, uh, pinned me off to saying that there's no tip, tip error. Uh, if you want to catch multiple exceptions, you can use a tuple here. Note we have to use parentheses here. And the reason for that is in Python 2, uh, the, assertion, or the try accept statement was slightly different in that, let's just do raise assertion error foo in that you could use commas to do the name binding here. In Python 3, it was changed to as because the commas were really easy to mess up. Um, but if I did, you know, if I mistakenly wrote this in Python 2, type error, um, and just hit pass. So what this actually did, instead of trying to catch two different exception types here, because you would think, you know, it's a comma, so it's a tuple. Uh, what this actually did is reassigned the variable type error to be the assertion error. Um, of course, this is a syntax error in Python 3. Raise assertion error foo, except assertion error type error. Yeah, you can see we get invalid syntax now. So uh, <laughs> this was a, a real easy foot gun. Uh, but that covers how we can do multiple exception types in a single accept clause. Note again, you can have multiple accept clauses, so you could catch you know some other exception here and do something else for that down there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to cover is capturing a variable uh, sequence of exceptions. And you can do that by just substituting a variable in here. And it can be, it ha I think it has to be a tuple. Actually, let's, let's try with a list. I don't think it's going to work with a list. Might. <laughs> I think it has to be a tuple. I'm about to prove myself wrong though, right? Yeah, has to be a tuple. The error message is actually kind of bad here. It says, catching classes that do not inherit from base exception is not allowed. However, a tuple is a class which doesn't extend from base exception. So there's there's some subtle, uh, subtle allowances in here that are, are slightly different. Okay, but that covers how you can use a variable sequence of types here. And this could be a function parameter, all sorts of different stuff. Um, this is actually used in the contextlib.raises, or contextlib. Uh, 
um, well, pytest.raises or contextlib.suppress. Uh, I can actually look at that. Contextlib suppress. Uh, oh, it's a class? Maybe they don't use it here. Maybe they use this instance. Oh, I see. <laughs> Interestingly, um, I guess Guido also considers the thing I'm about to show you a bug rather than a feature. So this actually uses is subclass instead of using uh, the actual accept statement because it's implemented as context manager. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, let me show you the last little quirk and what I consider a bug, and I guess Guido considers a bug too, is that uh, is instance and the accept clause are slightly different. Um, I actually made this example earlier to answer a YouTube comment, so I'm going to copy some code from that and show you how this executes and why things are ever so slightly different. So let's open up t2.py. Um, now this is more advanced than, than what we usually cover on these sort of videos. Um, <laughs> and right off the back, we, we have a, a, a meta class. And what this meta class does is it overrides how, um, how the is instance and is subclass calls work. And so that implements this subclass check hook. And this is a little bit magical, but it allows your class to extend from any sort of class. Um, so if we just put a breakpoint here, for instance, and we run this script, and 3t2.py, uh, you'll see we have this C class, which has this special meta class. And we can say is subclass uh, int C is is subclass um, and you'll see that you know because we have made this special subclass check hook here uh it c pretends like it's a subclass of every single type um which is you know a little bit weird but i'm using it just to demonstrate what i what i what i mean here um so if we go back to this example here so i make a subclass one of them has this meta class the other one does not and you'll see here that if we ask if C is a subclass of D, similar to how we did with int here, uh, you'll see in the output down here we get true uh, because of our subclass check hook. So C is a subclass of D. However, if we look in the raise statement here, you'll see that uh, C is not a subclass of D because the exception gets bubbled out. So that's one difference between accept and is instance, and you know, kind of, kind of a little bit weird. Uh, the other one that's different, and I actually, this is the second take of this video because I was muted for the first one. Uh, there's actually one other difference in try accept and with is instance. A neat thing about is instance, so let's just say x equals 5. A neat thing about is instance, and uh, this is because it's implemented recursively, you can actually nest tuples in this as deep as you want it. Uh, so let's say, you know, it's a little bit redundant to do in twice, but you can actually nest tuples in here uh, for the type parameter, and that will evaluate to true. You can't do this with try except though. So if we did try raise assertion error foo, except, I don't know, assertion error and uh, type error and value error, uh, this will actually give us a runtime error, or a type error that says catching classes that do not inherit from base exception is not allowed, which again, this except, this error message is a little misleading because we had tuples in here, and it should work the same as this instance, but it doesn't. I don't know if this one's a bug, um, but the other one definitely feels like a bug to me. But anyway, that's the accept statement, as well as two kind of quirky things about it, um, and how you can do both variable and multiple exception types. Hopefully this was interesting. If there are other things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.